Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we are out at the farm and we are going to do some fall uh, fall tilling. We just got the new Ironcraft. It's the UH60. It's a 60 inch tiller. The, the claim to fame about this tiller is its reverse rotation. It rotates against the tractor so as the tractor pulls forward it's trying to pull the other way so let's talk about some of the cool features on this this tiller versus some of the other tillers first off it has a spring-loaded rear door and if you're not if you don't really understand what the rear door does it de depending on if the door is open or closed it determines how fine or coarse your dirt will be coming out the back of the tiller so if you want your your dirt to be very coarse then you would set this to the weakest setting so that the dirt could escape out the back of the tiller as you move forward uh, at, at a quicker pace. If you want the dirt to be very fine and very chopped up, you put the springs to the, the strongest settings and it keeps the door closed harder. And what that allows is the, uh, the dirt to stay in the, the chamber as the tines come reverse and chopping it up. So it gets chopped more times with the door closed. It's still gonna push out the back, it's still gonna uh, the door's still going to move, but the more the, cl the closer you keep the door closed, the, the finer the tilling is. So another feature on this is that it has a sight glass for the oil level. There's so many tillers out there that don't have any kind of, only thing, only way you know if you have oil in it is you have to pull, pull out the plug that says if it leaks fluid out the, of this plug, then there's enough. And if it doesn't leak fluid out this plug, then there's not enough. This one, you just look at the sight glass on the side. Also, this has a dipstick on this right here. Now you can, I've got it tightened up, but you just pop it with a crescent wrench and you pull it out and it's got a dipstick. That is a super nice feature that most other tillers do not have. You have to like put a straw or get a piece of string and stick down in it or like a piece of metal, like a coat hanger and just kind of gauge it where this one actually has a dipstick with marks saying full and low. So that's a nice feature also. The other feature that I see that I really like is that it is set up for category two and category one autumn you know with it has both pins in one scenario the actual connections for the tiller uh, can move in and out ever so slightly uh, the way it is right now it's set up for just a medium-sized tractor like this tractor is right here no issues backed into it hooked it up ready to go wait one more thing i want to talk about is it does have this cool leg some of the some of the uh tiller manufacturers have this kind of leg that rotates around and just doesn't really do a good job this one has a foot and that is a very neat neat feature uh and it actually works I, I some of the other ones that you'll you'll set your tiller down and you come back a couple of days later and it's done fell over because of water for whatever reason this one's rigid you just when, you, when you're not using it you just take the pin out move the leg all the way to the top when you do need to use it you lift the tiller up put the leg all the way to the bottom put the pin in and then set your three-point hitch down and the, the tiller will just sit upright. That's a very nice feature and I like it a lot. Talk about the build quality. So I'm looking at the build quality overall on this tiller and it looks really well built. It's, it's plenty heavy. Uh, it's got adjustable feet so you can adjust the depth up and down. The, it's got a powder coated paint job. The welds look good. The hardware looks good. The boats look good. Everything looks quality. When, I, when you first get it you first see it you look at it and you just kind of get that warm fuzzy feeling like hey this is not a cheap piece this is a quality thing that's going to probably last me the rest of my life we've got that going for it so i've already went through and greased the tiller uh it, it was already pre-serviced all oh, there's oil and everything when i got it i it was already from a dealer it was already serviced i greased the shafts and this grease fitting uh, now don't go crazy on this grease fitting on the side it is if you put too much grease in it you literally can blow the seal out the other side and you'll have to take the tiller apart to fix that I think it's uh, uh, just okay, you know, about every, probably about every third or fourth use to come in and hit, just pump a couple of pumps of grease into this. Not a whole lot, just enough to keep a little fresh grease in it. Otherwise, if you put too much in it, it's going to push the bearing out. If you put too little in it, obviously the bearing will fail. Okay, I have never used this tiller before. I don't have any understanding of a, rever a reverse uh, rotation tiller. And I don't know that it's going to be any different, but we're going to go ahead and just... Uh, I'll leave it off the ground just a little bit and we'll start it up. All right, I'm gonna give the RPMs, get my 540. See what happens. Now this is very, very 
rough ground. Uh, we, we turned this over with a braking plow, a 16 inch bottom braking plow. Two about as hard as it's gonna get. It's got a lot of grass in it, some roots in it. Oh, we're buried, this is a 50 horsepower tractor and it is absolutely buried. I've got the door set right now to chop this up at very fine and because of we we used the 16 uh it's a we had a two bottom plow with 16 inch cutters on it and we were cutting pretty deep and you can see how there there's these big giant valleys so that was letting the the skids of the tiller fall down into those valleys and i mean it was just hammering down uh I, i'm absolutely sure that it's going to do a lot better once we get this knocked down but I, I mean, we went through a lot of grass. There's a lot of grass in this and it just, it just chewed it up. I mean, it didn't get tangled up. It just chewed it up and it kept that chamber full of dirt. Uh, we may have to adjust that back door. That back door is a big deal. Let's go ahead and hit this roll right here. This has got some roots in it and uh, a lot of grass and some big stuff. Let's see what it does on this. I was... I was impressed, I will say that. Uh, I, I can see once we have this till back out level that this is gonna be a, uh, uh, we can actually till it too much with this. It's a, it really does a great job. So first impressions, yes, it's better. It does till, it does till better than a forward tying tiller. Um, yeah, why, why aren't they all reverse tying? All right, what we're gonna do now is go ahead and try to adjust this back door. It's gonna let the, uh, a lot of the dirt come out the back and it shouldn't load up as bad. I mean, we were really making that thing fine. Second hole. All right, let's give that a whirl. All right, we're gonna throttle up a little bit. Turn our tiller on. That's 540. We're gonna drop our tiller, and now we're gonna see what it'll do. Let's back the world a little bit. I've already went across this twice, or this will be the second time for this particular run, and I've knocked down those big hills. So it's definitely, it's definitely uh, tilling better, but it's still loading up. I've got the, I've got the tines buried all the way down. But it's absolutely a beautiful bed behind me. I'm doing an obscene amount of tilling right now. I'm probably, the tines are probably eight, eight inches in the, in the ground right now. But the bed behind it is absolutely beautiful. So that's like the best looking bed I've ever seen. It really, I was down in it, maxed out this tiller. I mean, it's eight, eight inches down tilling it, every bit of it. So we turned this over back in the summer 
and we used a, a double bottom plow with 16 inch cutters and we were probably turning it over at six to eight inches it was really you know it was really rough on the tractor to get it done we were using the other small tractor and this tractor right here with this tiller we're doing a full 60 inches of 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 bedding it's like I could see where you would take one of those roll makers and go down through here and pull a row up and just plant potatoes to your heart's content. It's just, uh, it's about a perfect soil to work with in its current consistency. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come out here and I'm going to run another line of garden right here in this area that's never been tilled. This is very hard clay. There's a lot of roots in it. I'm just going to see what it does. I just want to know. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to have to till the entire the rest of the garden uh, knock we're going to probably go over and knock it down and then come back and do this final till now, i will tell you if a 48 horsepower tractor this reverse time tiller was eating the horsepower up so that's something to know yeah it was definitely eating the horsepower up all right i'm going to start this out on full dirt and then at the end it's going to get over into where i kind of run off a corner with a plow so the first half of this will be fresh untilled soil has never been tilled in the last 25 years. So this is about as hard as you can get. It's clay. It'll really tell what it's gonna do. Uh, I'm, I'm anticipating it's gonna do well. Let's just quit talking about it and do it. I'm gonna throw it all the way down and just see what happens. Wow, I can feel the whole tiller uh, pull the tractor backwards a little bit. All the way down. Untilled soil, 25 years. We get over here in the portion that has been turned over with a breaking plow. I think it's gonna go back deep again. Right now it's doing a really good job. That's not bad for going through thick grass that's been in here for been here for 25 years. That's that's pretty good. Um, I don't think the uh, Ford rotation tiller would have done any better whatsoever. I actually think this did better on grass. Uh, I buried it all the way, so I run this over again, and I think we're going to be golden. Let's do it again just to see. Okay, here's our second pass on new ground. I felt like the first pass did a really good job, but I just want to see what it'll look like after two passes on uh, ground that I know that's not been tilled in the last 25 years.
Okay, that is just plain out impressive. That's two passes on virgin soil. Um, it's pretty much ready to plant right now. I'm gonna go ahead and, and till this uh, next pass in the middle up there, smooth this all out, and then we're gonna get over into the really tough stuff at the top of the hill. Uh, there's some big clods and also a bunch of grass there. And I guess this was bad enough, but that it's even worse. All right, this is our second pass where we have that big, uh, we made two passes on two different lanes and I've got a little bit of rough dirt in the middle. So I'm gonna go down through the between them and see if I can smooth this out, see what it looks like. I think you guys will be able to see pretty well. Go ahead and put my throttle. I can say that that is pretty uh, amazing. So I, I'm very impressed with the reverse time tiller. It's the first time I've ever uh, used one. I've had a lot of people tell me that they are superior as far as creating a garden bed. Uh, it's coarse, or, or it's, it's fine enough, but not too too fine. It's got a little bit of coarseness still left in it. Uh, yeah, it's a really good looking bed. I could see uh, planting all kind of stuff next year. We'll go ahead and finish this whole uh, garden off and then I think probably what we'll do the next time we till with this tiller is we're gonna adjust the uh, skids a little bit lower. Right now it is cutting everything it's got and it, even with this 50 horsepower tractor it's, it's, it's eating all the horsepower up. So I know I couldn't pull it with my T25, a 25 horsepower tractor in this sit setup right now. I would definitely have to adjust the uh, the sl slides to not cut so deep and probably have to let the back gate open a little bit more so that the um, it doesn't build up so much dirt inside the, the, the pulverizing chamber. All right, let's get this done. Okay, now we've tilled this one time uh, and I, I, I had to pull the top of it up. We, we turned this over with a breaking plow, so it was really rough. And uh, I think the second go around, I think it's going to really uh, do a, you know, a fine job. I still haven't adjusted my, uh, my skids. I, I'm going to let it go all the way down and just let the tractor eat this up. And we'll go from there. Gizmo, what do you think? He likes the cool dirt, what he likes. Okay, so what I've done is I went ahead and set my uh, skid lower. I set it almost, I set it one 
I have one more bolt hole that I can go down with the skids. So I'm hoping that that's gonna make this thing work better as far as uh, how deep it's digging. Cause right now it's digging deeper than this tractor can handle. And this is a 50 horsepower tractor. So what that means is absolutely no hope for my T25 uh, in its original configuration. However, now we'll see what happens. I think it's gonna be different, uh, but we'll just, we'll know here just in a second. Okay, there we are it's not perfect i've still a lot to learn i think possibly that i have this tiller tilted too far forward that could be something to do with how that it's uh working so when it's going down it's keeping too much dirt in the front uh, possibly could also adjust the rear some more to let a little bit more dirt come out and i could go ahead and lower the lower the uh, skids another another run down but i'm definitely this thing is definitely a a horsepower hog and that's just you know that's what it is but my goodness when you look at the results and i think once i get it fine-tuned and understand how to really use it it's going to be great one thing i forgot to mention is this thing has a lot of tines and they're much bigger than my forward rotating tiller so you're going to really get a lot of that's what uses up so much horsepower and that's why the results are so good when it comes out the the end of the tiller this is the first reverse, reverse rotate. 